Hey guys, it's Pastor Will, and today I want to talk to you about gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. And let me just tell you something, having gratitude is easy when everything is going the way you want or the way you expect. But you know, and I know that things don't always go the way you want or expect. In today's story, we're going to learn about the best time to have gratitude. I'll t give you a hint. What is that? You know what? I'll tell you later. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 18. Ilsa sighed as she trailed along behind her mom at the grocery store. Can I just go wait in the car? Mom handed Ilsa a tiny loaf of bread to put into the cart. You need to learn for yourself what you can eat. Nothing, I can't eat anything. Earlier that day, Ilsa had gotten the food sensitivity test results back from the allergist. No gluten, no dairy, no artificial colors or flavors. I don't even know what gluten is. It's in bread and pasta and crackers and a lot of other things. Ilsa grabbed the loaf of bread. Then what's this? Gluten-free bread. It looks like cardboard. As they reached the dairy case, Ilsa spotted the new holiday display. Yes, they've got eggnog. She reached for a carton, but mom shook her head. Eggnog has dairy in it, hun. You can't have milk. Let's try this instead. Mom picked up a small carton and handed it to Ilsa. Soy nog? By the time they got home to unload groceries, Ilsa was miserable. You've gotta be kidding. What about Sunday dinners? What about Aunt Ellen's stuffing and Grandma's rolls and pie and all the good stuff? We'll find options for you, I promise. Ilsa reached for her plastic pumpkin full of candy on the counter. She grabbed a mini candy bar, and then stopped, a sinking feeling in her stomach. I can't eat any of this now, can I? I'm sorry, hun. When Ilsa opened her lunch bag at school the next day, she tried not to groan. A sun butter sandwich with gluten-free bread, a bunch of grapes, a few carrots, and some weird looking oatmeal cookies. Where's my string cheese? Oh, right. Ilsa couldn't bring herself to finish lunch, her stomach still felt empty as she settled back into her seat at social studies, where their teacher, Mr. Mendel, dimmed the lights for a slideshow. One of the best ways to learn about other cultures is through something we all do every day. Any ideas what that might be? Like what we wear? <laughs> Actually, I'm talking about something we do at least three times a day. Ilsa raised her hand. Eat. We all eat. Bingo! A famous photographer took photos of families all across the world, along with the food that they eat in one week. I want you to pay attention to the details. This first family lives in Great Britain. The first photograph included a family from the United Kingdom. The overflowing table of food included cookies and pizza. Mmm, pizza. Here's a family in southern Italy. The next image showed a family with three small children. The loaves of bread on the counter looked so fresh, Ilsa could practically smell the scent of baking bread. Ooh. This is Germany. 
The next image showed another table top loaded with food, but Ilsa could only focus on the container full of ice cream front and center. Yet another thing she could no longer eat. Her stomach rumbled. Here's a family in Bhutan. It's a small country beside India. The next photo showed 12 people with a colorful display of vegetables, a large bag of rice, and a small amount of meat. Ilsa frowned. That's all they eat? It's what they have to work with. This next photograph is from the country of Chad in Central Africa. A family of six sat on the ground. In front of them, a tiny bag of grains, a small amount of beans, and a handful of vegetables. Wait, where's the rest of their food? That's it. For a whole week? Ilsa shook her head. That's just... Ilsa? What are you thinking? I guess... I knew that some people don't have the same things to eat that we do, or as much. It's just different, seeing it. The colorful photos haunted Ilsa for the rest of the afternoon. She was quiet as she took off her backpack in the kitchen at home. You want a snack, hon? I've got some trail mix. I'm good. Ilsa pulled her lunch bag out of her backpack and opened it up. How was the gluten-free bread? It was okay, actually. I'm going to finish my sandwich now. Ilsa took a bite of her sandwich and chewed. It wasn't like regular bread, but she could get used to it. What's that thing Grandma always says before dinner? What thing? I don't, before the prayer. It's the verse, like say thank you, whatever happens. Oh, um, it's from Thessalonians, I think. Mom checked her Bible app. Give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. Yeah, that. Ilsa smiled and took a bite out of one of the oatmeal cookies. Hey, these are really good. Thanks for making stuff I can eat. Ilsa knew it would take some time to adjust her new eating plan, but she was glad for the reminder that she still had a lot to be thankful for. When the Apostle Paul first started telling people about Jesus, he didn't always get applause. Instead, a lot of people were mad at Paul, and he ended up spending a lot of time in jail just for saying what he believed. It's probably not the way he wanted things to go, but listen to Paul and listen to what he wrote. Give thanks no matter what happens. Did you hear that? No matter what happens. That means the best time to have gratitude is all the time. When you get picked for the team and you don't get picked for the team, when your mom buys your favorite cereal and your little sister or brother eats the last bowl, when you're in school, when you're out of school, or even when you've been quarantined in your own house. There's always something to be grateful for, if you look hard enough. Here's a good place to start. The Apostle Paul wrote, give thanks no matter what happens. He wants you to give thanks to him because you believe in Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Even when things don't go the way you want or expect, you can always be grateful because Jesus loves you and he died for you. So the one thing to remember today is, you always have something to be grateful for. So the next time you talk to God, tell him you're grateful. And not just when things go your way, be grateful even when times are tough because God loves you and is there for you all the time.